Hello, my love. What's up with you? I hope everything is fine. Buckle up because I have a very important topic to address and dissect with you today. And this very important topic is reality. I want to show you how reality is not what you think. Reality, first of all, is not out there in the circumstances, but inside you. And more specifically, specifically <laughs> in the meanings you assign the circumstances. So without further ado, let's jump straight into it. So I thought the best way to start out this video would be to head over Google and search for the definition itself of reality. And actually, I am given two definitions here, with the first one being reality is the state of things as they actually exist as opposed to an idealistic or notional idea of them. And then I'm given another definition of reality that states reality is the state or quality of having existence or substance. Okay, so far so good. So we can see here that reality refers to the state of stuff. And not just any state, it's not the idealistic state of a situation, but the actual state of the situation, right? And the first question that I want you to think about is, okay, I get that, but who decides what an actual state of anything is? Who does that? Is it society as a whole deciding what is what? Is it a specific group of people? And if we are to refer to something that you're observing right now, is it the group of people observing that that decides what is what? Or is it actually you? Think about this. And in order for me to demonstrate what I want to demonstrate to you here, I will walk you through a couple or maybe even three different scenarios to prove my point. So I will tell you what the circumstances at hand are and I want you to think about what's the reality of the situation. So please follow along because it's going to be a lot easier if you do. Put your thinking cap on and let's go. <laughs> Scenario number one. Let's say that today you're clumsy and you're also in a rush. So somehow you drop your favorite coffee mug. Now your coffee mug, it's on the floor in pieces, basically, right? So this is the circumstance at hand. Very easy, a no-brainer. I think we can all agree that in this situation, the reality of that mug is that now it's a broken mug. So in this case, reality seems to be one with the circumstance itself, right? Now I'm going to show you that this is not always that obvious or not always the case. <laughs> and for the next example, I'm going to use just a video that I saw yesterday and for whatever reason caught my eye because of the comment section. People arguing there about their opinion. <laughs> so anyways. Now scenario number two. Imagine yourself at the birthday party. More specifically, it's Joanna's birthday party. She just turned 12 years old. So everything is nice, a nice party. Everybody's there, like the whole family. And Joanna, I have to mention this, Joanna has three more siblings and they're all younger than her. So basically Joanna's the big sis here, okay? The cake moment arrives, Joanna makes a wish, blows out the candles, and she cannot enjoy this fully because she's distracted by one of her younger siblings crying because they want to do the same. The mom sees that, so she decides to light up the candles again for the crying sibling to be able to, you know, blow out the candles as well. So as you can imagine, now all kids want to do this. So mom lights up the candles for each one of them. And they all get to make a wish on Joanna's birthday cake. So far so good. This is our circumstance. 
Now I want you to think about the reality of the situation. So how do you see this? What meaning you would give all this? And don't be worried, my love. Like, there's no wrong answer here. You're going to see. And I'm going to help you a little bit. Maybe you don't understand what I'm asking out of you right now. So I'm, I'm going to help you out. So one way that you could look at the whole situation would be, you know, poor Joanna. Big sis can never have anything nice for her because she has to share with her siblings always. She's going to grow up traumatized eventually, right? And maybe if this looks like something that happened to you at some point in your own life, you kind of even start to empathize with poor Joanna. This is totally unfair for her. It's her special day. So this should be respected. Another point of view from which you can look at the whole situation could be, well, you know, after all, they're kids. And um, the villain here, the bad boy here, is the mom, actually, because she should know the impact this whole situation is going to have on all of her kids. Like, the younger siblings are only going to learn out of this that they can always get away with what they want, that they don't have to respect anybody else's uh, boundaries, and they will eventually grow up to be very immature adult people and very irresponsible and will not consider people's boundaries. They're going to grow up being entitled. They could use a lesson about how to respect other people's stuff. And this is what the mom should have done in the first place. You could also look at all this situation from the perspective of, you know what? I don't see anything wrong here. They're just kids. This is kids stuff. Like, no, Joanna ain't gonna grow up to be traumatized and have the big sister syndrome or whatever. And no, the younger siblings are not gonna grow up to be irresponsible adults because it takes a lot more than just this to affect their development as adults. So these are opinions that I took from that comment section of this video. And I want you to see something. It doesn't really matter what your opinion is in this situation. <laughs> I mean, it, it's irrelevant if you believe this is wrong or this is right. What I want you to see here is that reality is not in the event itself, in the circumstance itself, but in the meaning you yourself placed on it. So let's go back to the definition of reality. So reality is the actual state of stuff. So whatever you think that the actual state of stuff is, <laughs> that's got to be your reality. So see, who determines <laughs> what reality is, if not you? Because, my love, nobody can think for you. Nobody can assign meanings to stuff but you. Do you understand this? Even in the situations that look like for example, society says how you should behave or how things should be. or It's still you, my love. <laughs> Making up your mind about what society thinks. It's still you. It's still your own assessment. Do you, do you see this? Do you see how big this is? And how Mind-blowing. So reality is not out there set in stone and objective. Even though it appears to be like that most of the times. And you know why? Because the moment you settle for a meaning, you lose out of sight that you're doing that. You're the one assigning meanings. You basically become one with your assumption. And you cannot see anything else. <laughs> Unless you change your mind, of course. And then this new change of mind, this new meaning, becomes now your reality. Realize the following, my love. Whenever you think you look at an objective reality, realize that you're not looking as at the things as they are, but as you are. 
So you're basically looking at your own assessment about the situation at hand all the time. And you cannot avoid this. Let me put it even more clear. So you think you're in love with the person for who they are. But are you? <laughs> are you? <laughs> or are you actually in love with what you project onto that person? Let's say that you love funny people. And the person that you like cracked a joke or two. In the beginning when you met them. Well, who decided that this person is a jokester or a funny person, if not you? You did that. <laughs> you heard those couple of jokes that they made and you said, oh, this is a funny person, this is a jokester, I love it, I like it. Because again, let's go back to the definition Google gave us about reality. The one that says, well, reality is the actual state of the thing. So. This person making a couple of jokes means nothing. <laughs> Just like everything else in your life, my love, nothing comes with built-in meaning. Nothing. Until you give it one. And based on the meaning that you give that situation, that's how you're going to experience it. This is what your reality is going to look like. My love, and I have more news. All you do ever is experiencing your own meanings. And if you change the meaning, the experience changes. So this is what it means when you hear, if you change the way you look at things, the things that you look at change. This is the real meaning of everyone is you pushed out. Do you see how you, the only thing that you always do is actually imagining what is what. <laughs> and you have no other choice but to experience exactly what you assume something to be. So to me, this is fascinating, and I'm going to explain why. Well, before the law of assumption, my love, I was just like everybody else, thinking that reality happens outside of me. And I don't know who sets the rules here, but obviously not me. Like, <laughs> right? Like, things are what they are, and, well, most of the times I cannot do anything about them. But boy, oh boy, I was wrong. Because it's very hard to observe yourself uh, in the process of applying meanings to stuff. Because if so something sounds logical to you, okay, it's going to look like the one and only option, the one and only reality. And it's going to be to you, your one and only reality. But then you think this is how things actually are, like uh, at a universal scale. No, my love. <laughs> That's why we fight like idiots over our <laughs> over our opinions. And guess what? We are all right. The person that thinks this is no big deal is no less right than the person that thinks, oh, this is a huge deal. All these kids are going to grow up to be entitled uh, pieces of, you know what? Oh, again, they're both right, my love. Because <laughs> this is your power. You can choose how to experience anything. In my case, I thought this is dangerous. When I came across the law of assumption and I understood this, I thought this is dangerous because what if the law of assumption is not true and then I'm exposing myself to danger? For example, let's say I meet somebody and they're a narcissist and I see that they're a narcissist, but somehow I tell myself, no, they're not. And then, you know, I'm exposing myself to be taken advantage of, for example, to be abused or whatever. But this is the thing, my love. It doesn't really matter how that person shows up because I'm only going to see what I want to see. <laughs> and also think about the following. Most of the times we make up our minds based on our previous experience. Okay? So if I had a bad experience, for example, with somebody that, let's say, was born in December. Well... Now I have a, a new definition in place. I'm going to think, okay, people born in December are a certain way and I should stay away from them, right? So next time that I meet a person and let's say I don't know from the get-go when their birthday is and I like them, like they're nice, they're fine. Yeah, but the moment, <laughs> the moment they tell me, you know, 
their birthday is in December, I'm gonna change my opinion about them. Because my experience says, well, people born in December aren't trustworthy or whatever the case, yeah? Do you see why some patterns keep on repeating your life? Well, because you keep on assuming the same stuff, my love. You keep on giving the same meanings to things that happen in your life. So your life cannot change drastically at all. Let's talk money now. So if you know yourself to be someone that struggles with money, how can anything change if every time that I'm mad with any kind of circumstances that has to do with money, I relate to it in the same old way? So basically, my love, reality is nothing but your own perception. That's it. And there's more to this. Your meaning becomes the one and only reality until you change your mind. Now let's make another exercise here. Something that I do almost in all my one-on-one -on -one sessions, to be honest. Especially when people come for SPs, yeah? So for example, let's say, think about, think about one of your exes, yeah? More specifically, think about someone that you assume they have lost feelings for you. Or even worse, that they never had those feelings for you and they only pretended or had a hidden agenda or tried to use you. Do you recall anybody like that in your life? Well, do the following, my love. Let's take this same person and put them through another filter. And I want you to look at them through the filter that says, you know, this person always cared about me. They always cared about me. They always had feelings for me. Do it without judgment. Do it in a playful way. It's possible. I hear you. You say, nah, hear me out. Do what, do what I say. Look at this person as they always had feelings for you. And I can guarantee your mind is going to cooperate just, just the way it's, do, it's doing right now by <laughs> reinforcing the belief you have that this person never cared about you, it's going to do the same if you tell this new story about them. This is the only thing that your mind does all the time and it doesn't care if it's something positive that you tell yourself or negative or indifferent. Your mind is going to cooperate and bring up all the moments when whatever you're telling yourself to be true appears to be true. And of course, the longer you dwell in whatever assumption, the more you see it. And the more you see it, the more you believe it. And so on and so forth until it becomes a belief. And then you cannot see anything else. <laughs> That's all with you all the time. Connecting dots that are not even there, my love. Let me tell you this. Because nothing comes with built-in meaning at all. And based on your belief system, well... Any situation that falls in your hand, you pass it through all these filters that you already have. And most of the times, yeah, again, it's the filter of experience, right? So you're going to find things that match your belief. You're going to read between the lines so much until you see something that matches your current belief systems. And now I digress because, again, I <laughs> talk a lot. Back to our exercise here. So are you able to see all the moments when this person showed interest in you? I'm sure you can, my love. I'm sure you can. Your mind's going to do your job for you, okay? If you do this correctly, your mind's going to do your job for you. And you're going to be mind blown because you're going to have some realizations like, oh my God, that moment when this happened, I thought he meant this, but he actually meant that. And uh, I don't know, at least people in my one-on-one -on -one sessions are mind blown when I show them like a forgotten uh, point of view like that. They have the realization, oh my God, so this person always cared about me. I just couldn't see it. Or if I saw it, I couldn't take it seriously or I couldn't believe for the life of me that they do care about me for whatever reason. And no, my love, again, you're not lying to yourself. This is not lying to oneself. This is also not being delusional. You cannot be delusional. And you know why? <laughs> because <clears throat> everything has to exist. Back to the definitions again. The second definition that said um, 
reality is the state or quality of having existence. And we just saw that realities are actually our imagination. Well, that must also mean that everything that is in my imagination has to be reality. Do you see it? I wish I could explain better. I, I understand myself, but I hope you I hope you also do. Again. So reality refers to the actual state of stuff. And we saw that okay, the actual state of stuff, but who says what the state of something is, if not you? And how do you do that? Well, by imagination. Because everything that you do is imagination, let me tell you. Because imagination or imagining it's the only thing that your mind does. It's the one and only quality of it. Even when you think that, no, you're not imagining, you're, you're looking at facts, you're imagining, my love. <laughs> Remember, when you're observing something, you're not looking at the thing as it is. You're looking at the thing as you are. You project onto it. You're basically looking at your own assessment all the time. So by this logic, if imagination is reality, then everything that's within imagination has to be reality, has to exist. Can you see it? This is amazing. Let me tell you, if you got what I'm trying to explain here, my love, a brand new level of freedom, brand new level of ascension in consciousness. Not to mention that um, shaping your life becomes a lot more easier because now you know you can never be wrong. I can assume whatever I want about any situation and I'm never going to be wrong. Even if, I don't know, everything is against my assumption. Even if my senses tell me, hey, this is not it. So this is what Neville meant by an assumption, even though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. Because facts of life, my love, are nothing but your imagination as well. Do you see it? Do you see it? This is so huge. Please tell me that you see it. In conclusion, my love, stop wasting time worrying. Because no matter what you assume, you're always going to be right. You think you can do something, you're right. But you're also right if you think you can't. Therefore, learn how to give the best meanings to whatever happens to you in your life. Learn to be more present. Observe yourself observing things. And observe yourself coming to conclusions as well. This is the only way to break thinking habits that are not in your favor. Thinking patterns that kept your life going in a certain way. And patterns repeating within your money area, love area, health area, you name it. In order for you to access another paradigm, you have to change first, my love. You cannot wait for the change to happen on the outside, all while you keep on giving the same definitions to stuff, keep on assuming the same things. If you want to get rid of something in your reality, let's say if you don't want to have any more experiences, for example, with narcissistic people. Stop assigning these meanings. <laughs> Stop uh, slapping this label on people's forehead that come in your life. Because guess what? Again, you can only experience your own meanings. So if I think I'm being abused, I am. I'm going to experience it this way. If I think somebody is manipulating me, this is what I'm going to experience. This is going to be my whole entire reality. Do you understand? If you think you're ghosted, if you have these definitions, well, uh, if somebody doesn't reply to you for I don't know how many days, you're going to experience this as you being ghosted and dropped, abandoned. And no, my love, so the real reason why you keep on experiencing this stuff is not because of any trauma that you have, it's because you... Keep on picking the same meanings for things that happen in your life. Do you see how powerful this is? So the moment you just say, you know what? Yeah, okay, I know narcissists exist. Uh, people that manipulate exist. Bad people, abusers exist. But that's not part of my world. The moment you stop placing these meanings on whatever happens to you, 
they stop. <laughs> so there's nothing to heal, my love. There's nothing to heal, to repair about yourself. You're perfectly fine. Just make better choices. That's all. That's all you have to do. And with all this said, I think I'm done with the video. I think for today we had enough. As usual, my love, thank you so much for uh, listening. Thank you for being here until the end. And of course, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comment section. I'm trying my best to answer as much as I can, okay? Again, thank you and talk to you soon. Bye-bye.